Number one. I am an 18-year-old male. In November of last year, me and a friend decided to drive my car to Scotland to do some fishing, and eventually make our way to Edinburgh. After the first day of catching some salmon and brown trout, we stored our catches in the cooler box. After contemplating whether to sleep in the car tonight, as we had left it quite late to set up camp, eventually I said, "Let's set up a fire and cook the fish." I didn't drive all the way to Scotland to sleep in the car. My friend agreed as we set off looking for a spot to camp. We found a little wooded area next to a car park near a farm. We looked into it prior, and apparently you can basically camp anywhere in Scotland as long as you left the place as you found it. So, we grabbed all of our stuff out of the car and started setting up our campsite. Twenty minutes later, we have a fire going, two fold-up chairs and two tents up. My tent was out of view from my friends. This will be relevant later. We were glad we chose to camp out instead of sleep in the car, as we smoked a few joints. We reminisced about school life and just life in general. My friend struggled to keep his eyes open as I checked my phone. 2 a.m. He called it at night, crawling into his tent and zipping it shut. I sat there with my feet up on my friend's now empty seat, listening to the sounds of the wildlife. I shut off the torch we had hung up on a tree next to us, leaving me in darkness apart from the burning embers from the coal. It must have been three or so minutes before I started to hear the crunching of leaves and snapping of twigs that seemed to be coming towards me. Being a quite rational person, I passed it as a fox drawn to the scraps of food we may have left laying around. I was quickly proven wrong when I heard a sniffle like someone with a cold clearing their nose. My hide turned from chilled out to paranoia as I feel a heavy dread come over me. My mind raced: Why the fuck is someone out here in the woods at two to three a.m.? Why are they coming towards me? I slowly reached down to my pocket and felt my heart drop as I didn't feel the smooth blade of my pocket knife. Shit! I must have left it in my tent. All the while, I hear the treading coming closer and closer. My heartbeat racing. Out of the darkness, I see a middle-aged man, clean-shaven, parted hair around five ten, slowly creeping towards me, almost on all fours, like a predator trying to stay out of sight. I sat there, paralyzed, unable to speak. My mouth was so dry I could hardly swallow. That's when I realized he hadn't even seen me. Being under a tree with no light source, I must have blended in. Also. With there only being one tent in view, I guess he thought my friend was the only one camping here. He got closer to the tent, and half breathed and half whispered, "Come on, do it," in a raspy voice. Creep the fuck out, and unable to bear the thought of what he'd do next, I said, "Oi, can I help you?" He jumped up in shock, and his whole demeanor changed. He looked at me, mumbling awkwardly as he scurried out of the woods. I sat there, still trying to comprehend what happened, when I saw the headlights of a car turn on and drive away. I woke my friend, and he could tell how shook up I was, without a full explanation from me. He then willingly grabbed all of our gear, and we slept in the car that night with the doors locked. Number two. I wanted to take the time to describe a terrifying experience that I recently had during my travels for work. To this day, logic still defies the events that transpired, and they have haunted me ever since. I'm still afraid to stop my car at highway rest areas to this very day. I recently landed a position in sales with a very solid company in the medical device industry. Being in my mid twenties, I am thrilled to work for such an innovative company. The money is great, the job is fun, and hell, they even gave me a company vehicle. That's a great perk. The only downside to the job is that my sales territory is quite expansive and covers several states, and because of budget constraints, they expect me to drive to most of my customers. I could not complain, however. Not many people my age get these kinds of opportunities. I finished up my work at a hospital in central Pennsylvania when I received a phone call from a clinic in Western New York, 
that wanted to place a buy for my product. But before they could do so, they wanted a product demo. Not wanting to lose the opportunity, I agreed to be there by 9am. My GPS showed the trip to be 5 hours if I took a highway that cut through the Allegheny Forest. Being that it was now 5pm, I figured that I could make the drive now, since I had a bag packed with extra scrubs, toiletries and product manuals for my current trip. I headed to a gas station, filled my SUV, purchased some snacks and two energy drinks, and hopped on the single lane highway north towards New York State. It was the middle of November and quite cold, with the sun setting early and giving way too much darkness in the late afternoon. By the time I had started my drive, it was already dark. Thick clouds were obscuring the moonlight, a wall of trees surrounded my vehicle on both sides, making it seem that I was driving my SUV through a tunnel of wood and darkness. The headlights from my vehicle were illuminating the staggered white lines separating the lanes from the highway were the only source of light. The drive definitely took an ominous feel. I thought nothing of it as I slugged back my energy drinks and listened to some comedy podcasts to pass the time. When I was about two hours into my drive, the inevitable has happened when one has had large amounts of caffeine and a belly full of gas station snacks. I had to find a restroom eventually, which I was okay with since I wanted to get out of the car and stretch my legs anyway. I had passed a small town about 15 minutes back and I knew that I needed to find another one or pull off the highway or see if there was a rest stop anywhere ahead. Almost as if fate had heard me beckoning, I saw a sign that said, Rest Area, 2 Miles. This is my lucky night, I thought, as I realised that I would not have to resort to leaving myself in the middle of the woods on a dark and creepy night. I came upon the rest area, which was located right off the side of the highway. It was nothing like the rest areas one is used to encountering on major highways. There were no restaurants or vending machines. There was a single, lonely picnic table and a garbage can on a patch of grass, and two separate brick buildings with brown metal roofs on them. A single overhead street lamp barely illuminated my oasis, as it was flickering on and off, probably from neglect considering how remote this place was, and how little use it was getting. The building to the left housed the ladies' restrooms, while the one to my right housed the men's restrooms. I placed my car in park in one of the ten available spots in front of the buildings, and grabbed my phone to keep me entertained while I took care of business. As I walked on the narrow concrete walkway towards the restrooms, I caught a glimpse of something in the woods behind the rest area. It was still quite dark outside, and the overhead lights provided too little illumination to discern what I was looking at. All I could see at that distance was an obscure black shape shifting through the thick trees. It could have simply been my eyes playing tricks on me, since I had spent the better part of the day either in a brightly lit operating room or driving down a pitch black highway, I shrugged my shoulders and made my way into the men's room. There were three stalls on the far end of the restroom, flanking three urinals. Two flimsy overhead lights with exposed bulbs were the only sources of light. One of the panels had a bulb completely out and the other was flickering sporadically making the entire room look like it was lit by a strobe light in a nightclub. Just fucking perfect, I thought. I'm stuck in the creepiest bathroom in the world, and I can barely see anything. I decided not to make a big deal about it. I'd be back on the road shortly. I took the stall in the middle. I had no reason why. I'd simply just randomly selected it. I sat down and nearly jumped from how cold the seat was. This was becoming quite an annoyance. At that moment, I had no idea but things were about to get a whole hell of a lot worse. As I was in the midst of doing my business, the lights went out. Of all the times that this pathetic single tubular bulb could have called it a quit, it had to do so when I was using a restroom in one of the most isolated spots in the state. You've got to be fucking kidding me. I groaned out loud. At this point... The light from my phone was the only source of light cutting through the shroud of darkness that crept over the entire room. It was only at this point that I realised how quiet it had been this entire time. Aside from the sound of the slight breeze outside hitting the building, it was dead silent. I sat there in silence, playing games on my phone when I first heard it. At first, 
It sounded like a faint shuffling sound, the obscure noise of someone or something making its way towards the entrance of the restroom. I found this rather odd, because I would have heard another vehicle pull up since the parking lot was right across from the two buildings. The shuffling then became more discernible. It was footsteps. Slow, trudging footsteps were making their way into the restroom. By how loud they were, whoever or whatever this was had entered the room. As the footsteps continued, I noticed that they were making a slapping sound against the tile floor. It was as if this person or thing was barefoot. The footsteps became heavier and louder, and I noticed that they were moving towards the stalls. I looked at my phone screen and sat there frozen with fear. My heart was pounding out of my chest, and sweat started to creep across my brow despite the chill in the air. By this point, along with the heavy, slapping footsteps, I heard the breathing. This thing's breathing was too otherworldly to be human. It took long, heavy, animal-like breaths and exhaled in a way that resembled an asthmatic with a faint whistle at the end. I had never heard such a thing. By this point, my bowels were completely voided from fear and I was grateful that I had been sitting on a toilet for I would have shut my pants had I not been. This foreboding presence continued to trudge towards me until I heard its heavy breaths right outside the door to the stall. In the pitch black restroom, all I could hear was this thing breathing a mere few feet away from me, now certain that it was aware of my presence. My heart continued to pound as I hear it shuffle around outside of the stall. I had never felt so helpless in my life. I was trapped here at the mercy of this creature. After what I imagined was several minutes, the breathing quieted down some. I had pulled my feet up and was squatted on the toilet in fear that this thing would see me. I knew that it was still there, but for whatever reason, call it curiosity, or perhaps a fear-induced lack of judgement, I took out my phone and flicked up the flashlight app, and then pointed it at the floor underneath the stall door entrance. I nearly dropped my phone in horror at what I saw. Two massive feet were pointed straight at me. They were unbelievably large, too large to be human. The tops of them were covered with a matted brown and grey hair, while the toes were a pale, purplish coloured flesh with toenails that were long, ragged and yellow. I barely had time to notice the grotesque feet of this creature when it took notice of the light and let out a monstrous growl that shattered the silence of the pitch black room. It sounded like a growl that came straight from hell. It was a primal, guttural, inhuman voice. The noise was deafening. My terror had completely overtaken me as I fell onto the floor and prepared to meet my doom at the hands of this beast. I closed my eyes as I heard it begin to pound on the door, cracking noises indicating that it was getting closer on every strike to breaking the stall open and getting its probably equally grotesque hands on me. Just when I thought that I was a dead man, the monster had quieted down and seized its assault on the stall door. I opened my eyes. I was still alive. For now. It was then that I heard another familiar sound from the other side of the room. Those heavy, slapping footsteps. Jesus Christ. There are two of them. I thought as terror pierced every muscle in my body as I lay limp on the floor. I heard the second set of footsteps grow closer. As I prepared to meet my fate, where I'd no doubt be torn in half by two forest beasts, that's when the face-off happened. Both creatures began to growl at each other, back and forth, as if locked in some sort of display of alpha male aggression. After several exchanges, they made their move. I heard the sound of flesh hitting flesh and bodies slamming up against the walls. I flicked my flashlight app back on and pointed it towards the noise as I looked from under the stall. The two creatures were locked in a life and death melee. They were growling inhumanely as they pushed at each other back and forth, blood spilling onto the floor from what I imagined was them clawing and biting at each other in this life and death struggle. As their battle continued, one began to back away out of the entrance to the men's room and the other followed in a frantic sprint. 
I still heard their inhuman growls as their battle continued outside until their voices trailed off into a barely audible drone in the woods. As terrified as I was, I got to my feet and exited the store. I pointed the light from my phone against the floor. There was dark red blood and tufts of greyish brown fur all over the floor. It looked like someone was filled dressed in an animal carcass in here. The stench was unbearable. It smelt like the inside of an animal cage at a zoo. What the hell were these two things? I was not going to stick around and find out. I sprinted back to my car, entered, slammed the door shut, and peeled out of the parking lot like I was in a street race against death. My truck tires screeched as I craned out of the entrance and back onto the highway. I was covered in sweat and hyperventilating, having narrowly escaped a horrible death at the hands of some primal beast from a forgotten era. I sped the rest of the way to my destination in New York. I arrived and checked into a hotel. I sat at the bar and downed several scotches before even dropping my bags in my room. My rattled nerves settled down eventually, and I made my way to my room. I lay on the bed, sleepless, but sure of two things. I was not taking that route back home, and I was never stopping at a rest stop ever again. Number 3 this happened to me when I was in primary school. I was in year 4, which would have me around 8 or 9 years old. I live in a fairly quiet town in the UK. I only lived maybe 2 or 3 streets away from my school, so from a fairly young age my mum trusted me to walk to school either with friends or alone. A few of these times people would smile and say hello, or ask if I was okay. I'd explain that I was on my way to school. Everyone knew how close the school was, so I'd just carry on my travels. I've drawn a little diagram of the streets leading to my school. My artistic abilities aren't great, but I think I'd fully struggle to fully describe the surroundings. Here it is. The dark green splodges are quite thick trees that line the side of the road. The ground around the trees and fences was maybe a meter or so lower than the road, so there was a little sliding bank going down. The school was fairly old, and the fence that once contained the trees had seen better days, most of it either having fallen down or rusted apart. All the kids were under strict instructions not to go down the bank, but hey, we were kids. The lighter green area was just grass that we were under strict instructions to never play on, unless we were with a teacher. I've added the little orange line to give some references to how long the road is. That's about a car's length. So anyway, I'm walking to school one day, and I noticed a guy sat down in the grass on the bank, the purple circle on the diagram. I keep to the other side of the road and go on with my day in school. Over the next week, he's there every day, sat with his legs going up the bank, facing the road. Very strange position, just looking around. I keep my distance and it's starting to freak me out. But I was young and by the time I reached the school, I was entirely distracted and forgot all about it. This happened nearly every day for a week. I'm sure once or twice he yelled out for me, but as I was walking on the other side of the road, I paid no attention and just carried on. It was a Friday of that week, and I set out to school as normal, this time pretty much on time. I noticed the guy isn't there, and I paused for a second. I couldn't tell you whether that frightened me or not, because in all honesty, I don't remember. I carried on walking, not giving it too much thought. I probably stop to pick some grass off the bank as usual and pick at it as I'm walking. Not in any kind of rush, just enjoying the stroll. It's then that I notice that it's really quiet. Like I said, I'm fairly on time and usually there's upwards of 200 children lining up to go inside. It was usually very noisy with kids laughing and playing and yet, as I'm walking, I couldn't hear anything but birds and my own breath. I go to the end of the street and turn to go through the gate, the blue line on the sketch. And as I look, I was so embarrassed. There is no one in the playground and the shutters are closed. It must be an inset day. Teachers are still in on inset days, so I figure I'll go inside and ask one of my teachers to call my mum to ask her to come get me. If none of the doors are open, I'll just walk back home. 
I opened the gate, and like usual, it made the loud, crashing noise of metal on metal as it shut behind me. It was then I saw the reception doors fly open, and teacher bound towards me. At first, just the sudden movement shocked me, and I was a little scared. I didn't really have time to process anything before she literally snatched me up and ran back into the building. Safe to say, I'm in complete shock, and I've got no idea what's going on. She asked me where I've been, and if I'm okay. I can see teachers standing around with panic on their faces, and in all honesty, I thought I was in trouble. Turns out, one of my very best friends, Molly, had been walking to school that morning when a man who was sat on the bank asked her to come and look at something on the ground next to him. She was walking alone, so she told him no, and that she had to go to school. He stood up and walked over to her, showing her a flower on his palm. I'm not sure what he said to her. I've never asked for specific details, but it was something that put her at ease. He asked her name, and she told him it was Molly. After that, she said goodbye, knowing Molly probably with a great big smile carried on walking along the road, and apparently he went back by the trees. She reached the gate, and it was relatively early, so the playground was empty, and she started walking towards the school, the blue circle on the sketch. She heard someone yelling her name, so she walked back towards the trees to see what was happening. That's when this guy hurls himself at her, restrained her, and tries dragging her down into the bank. I don't know the exact details, but I know there was a struggle. More than lucky, she did what she'd always been taught, and kept shrieking as loud as she could. This alerted a teacher who ran out of the school building towards the noise. As soon as this guy saw the doors opening, he pushed Molly to the ground and took off into the bank. The school was put into complete shutdown. Police were called. The kids already in breakfast club were kept in the building, and people's parents were called to tell them not to bring the kids to school. Like I said, my mum worked and wasn't contactable. Anyway, I stayed in there with Molly and the police officers until my mum came to pick us up. Then, I remember staying at Molly's house for nearly a week because all she did was cry. Truly heartbreaking stuff to remember. Hey guys, it's the Grim Reader. So, thank you very much for listening to this video. If you enjoyed, why not check out my other videos by clicking on the links on the screen. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks a lot for listening.